The Royal Court of Justice on the Strand in London is the seat of the High Court of Justice and the Court of Appeal. Its dimension is 470 feet from east to west, 460 feet from north to south, 245 feet from the strand level to the tip of its flange. It was designed by George Edmund Street, born in 1824, unfortunately died before the building was completed and opened by Queen Victoria on the 4th of December 1882. Edmund Street was a renowned architect who used a lot of Gothic styles in his working life. This can be seen in most of his popular work which included Restoration of Oxford, Winchester and Ripon Cathedral, Restoration of Bristol Cathedral and the Royal Courts of Justice. Until the late 19th century, a number of separate courts existed all around London. The Treasury Court, featured in Dickens' Blake House, was one of these. The site upon which the Royal Courts of Justice now stand was in those days a slum. Around 450 houses occupied by more than 4,000 people. When it was decided that the London's court should be brought under one roof, the land was bought from the Middlesex County Council for £1.4 million. That is about £45 million in today's money, and the people were cleared out. Eleven architects competed for the contract to build the Royal Court of Justice, and they all submitted different approach to the building. It was later decided that George Edmund Street will be the one to carry out the contract. Since he was the sole architect on this project, he designed the whole building from the foundation to its completion. The building process started in 1873. It took more than eight years to complete the building. Due to a stonemason strike, masons were shipped from other continents to work on the building. The foreign workers who were employed to work on the building were housed within the building to protect them from striking English counterparts as they were not warmly welcome. This issue was later resolved. The first extension was the West Green Building, for which plans were drawn in 1910. The space was for extra divorce courts. They were the first to have modern air conditioning and tape recording in the original design. The next new building was the Queen's Building, opened in 1968, providing a further 12 courts. This building also contains cells in the basement. It was intended that this course could be used for criminal matters. However, as the jury box could only hold 10 people, they are not suitable for such a use and are now used for family proceeding. With an ever-increasing workload, the 11-story Thomas Small building was built to house the bankruptcy, company's courts, and more offices. It is possible to have a grand view from the top level, looking over to St. Paul and the Central Criminal Court, situated at the Old Bailey in the City of London. Finally, it was necessary to build an additional 12 courts for the Transgender Division named the Thomas More Court, which opened in January 1990. The Thomas More building is now used by the County Court as Central London, which is not part of the High Court. All this meant that there is little room left for further extension on the site should it be necessary in the future. However, an extensive refurbishment of the East Block took place during 1994 to 1995, which provided 14 extra courts for the Civil Division of the Court of Appeal and two extra large courts which are unassigned and will be used for cases where there are several parties involved or there are unusual large amounts of documents and books. It should also be remembered that there are further courts at the Rose Building, which comes under the wing of the Law Court and are within short walking distance. Anyone is allowed to watch the trials which are taking place free of charge, apart from private family cases such as 
adoption proceedings. The Royal Court of Justice houses an administrative group which is divided into a number of divisions, each of which has its own courts. The building accommodates both courts of appeal and the High Court. The Court of Appeal, which sits in London, and the Royal Court of Justice consists of two divisions, the Civil Division and the Criminal Division. The Civil Division, which hears appeals from, the three divisions of the High Court, namely Chancery, Queen's Bench, and the Family Division, from the County Courts across England and Wales, from certain tribunals such as Employment Appeal Tribunal, the Immigration Appeal Tribunal, the Lands Tribunal, and the Social Security Commissioner. The Criminal Court The Criminal Court, which hears appeals from the Crown Court, appeals are mostly against conviction in the Crown Court, sentences given by the Crown Court, even if the conviction was in a magistrate's court, confiscation order imposed by the Crown Court. They also hear other types of appeal from proceedings in the Crown Court, including cases referred to them by the Attorney General, where there is concern that the sentence given by the Crown Court may be too lenient. The High Court The High Court deals with high-level civil disputes. There are three divisions of the High Court, the Queen's Bench, the Chancery Division, and the Family Division. The cases commonly handled by the Queen's Bench are disputes relating to personal injury, negligence, breach of contract, breach of statutory duty, breach of the Human Rights Act 1998, enforcement orders which allow the courts to ensure that a party complies with a judgment against them. The Chancery Division The Chancery Division is part of the High Court of Justice. The areas of work that it deals with are business and property related dispute, competition, intellectual property claim, companies claim, and appeals from the high courts and transfer division from lower courts. The family court. The family court normally hears all cases relating to family issues, for instance, issues involving international child adoption, forced marriage, female genital mutilation, and application for family relief where a divorce has taken place outside of England and Wales. Also hear appeals from certain decisions made by the family courts. Other areas of the high courts include the administrative courts, which is one of the most varied in terms of what it covers. The types of cases it deals with are judicial reviews, statutory appeals and application, Application under the Drug Trafficking Act 1994 and the Criminal Justice Act 1998. Legal robes and wigs have been known to be a great part of the legal system, and as odd as it might seem, when judges first started wearing robes, they probably wouldn't have stood out as today. The costume of a High Court judge was more or less established by the time of Edward III and was based on the correct dress for attending the royal court. The material for these rules were originally given to the judges as a grant from the crown. The colors were velvet for winter and green in summer, with scarlet for the vest. But the last mention of green robes dated back to 1534. In 1635, the definitive guide to court dress was published in the judge's room. This didn't introduce new costumes. It just set out what existing robe should be worn and when. After 1635, the correctly dressed judge would have worn a black robe, first with a lightly colored fur in winter, and a velvet or scarlet robe, first with short pink tefet in summer. Until the 17th century, lawyers were expected to appear in court with clean, short hair and beards. Wigs made their first appearance in a courtroom purely and simply because that's what was worn outside the court. The reign of Charles II made wigs an essential wear for polite society. However, 
the judiciary took some time to be convinced, and portraits of judges from the early 1680s still show judges definitely sporting their unnatural hair, and wigs did not seem to have taken place until 1685. The reign of George III saw wigs gradually going out of fashion. By the end of the century, they were mainly worn by bishops, coachmen, and the legal profession. And bishops were even given permission to stop wearing wigs in the 1830s. Judges wore only full bottom wigs until the 1780s, when the less formal and smaller bob wigs with frizzle size rather than cord and a short tail or queue at the back was adopted for civil trials. The full bottom wig continued to be used for criminal trials until the 1840s, but is today reserved for ceremonial dress. Smaller wigs are used on a day-to-day -day basis.